Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is, ben is Benjamin, and welcome to part 16 for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. In the last video, we added a spark effect. When a cannon takes damage, it looks quite nice. In this video, we're going to be adding this impact effect right here so that we can just give it even a little bit more impact to show that the cannon is hit. This series is made possible by the students who support me by purchasing my Godot courses. Currently, my Intermediate Action RPG course is on sale on my website through May. Currently May. If you want to go check that out, there will be a link in the description. Let's get started. In the last video, I said that this restart function was necessary for the finish signal to be emitted. And you can see right here that um, in the documentation for the finish signal, it says, note, for one-shot emitters, due to the partic particles being computed on the GPU, there may be a short period after receiving the signal during which emitting uh, to true will not restart the emission cycle. This delay is avoided by instead, by instead calling restart. As far as I can tell, finished does actually emit, even if we don't call restart here. Now, maybe in an earlier version of Godot, there was a bug that caused it not to be emit. I'm not sure. But you can see that they are emit like that. However, uh, it does feel like there is, a, there is a chance that sometimes it starts emitting again right after. And I think that's what the documentation is saying here. It's a little bit hard to understand exactly. Not under restart, but under finished. Where's my under finished here? The signal is never emitted when one shot is disabled. Um, so here's what I think happened. Because I was turning on one shot in code, yeah, I'm remembering now. Because I was turning on one shot in code, I think I actually had to call restart originally in order for one shot to actually trigger the finished signal. Because if one shot is set to false, finished will never trigger because the particle should never have a finished state, right? And I do think there was a bug originally, and that's why I called restart here. So depending on which version of Godot you're using, you may or may not have to call restart. It looks to me like currently this is solved, though. I mean, as far as I can tell, this is working correctly now. I don't see any need to leave that restart in there, and it's just a little bit confusing, but... Yeah, I remember having to call restart in order to get the finish signal to emit, and that was an earlier version of Godot, so it looks like they've addressed that. Now we're going to create a new scene, and we're going to call this impact particle burst effect. We'll use our particle burst note, custom node, impact particle burst effect. Save, click 2D, and we're going to set some properties on it here. First property is the amount. We only need one. Next, we'll do the texture. We'll drag over our impact. There we go. And there is a way to set the offset here. And we want to set the offset. I don't remember if I did it in transform. I'm going to assume that the process material is where I handle the offset because we don't want this particle to be centered like this. We want it to be centered more over here so that when we're creating it, um, it's a little bit farther away from its rotation point because right now it's going to rotate. Oh, rotation doesn't work in the particle, but imagine it rotating around this. We want it to rotate around a point here. First, let's go into time. We're going to set this to 0.25 for the time. Now we need to set our process material. So let's create a new process material. And under here is where we can set all of the magic 
for creating our particle. We don't need to do anything with flags, but we do need to change the position here. And you can see I did minus six, and that is what correctly sets the, in, the offset that I want. We are going to remove the gravity on this, so come into accelerations and set gravity equal to zero. And we're gonna do some things with the color and with the scale of this. So come into display, scale, and we're gonna create a new scale curve, just like we did before. And we'll set this curve equal to, let's see, we'll bring this down and we'll pull this point up like that. So it kind of scales down um, in this, this arc right here. Looks pretty good. And we're gonna do color curves. And inside of our color curves, we're gonna do a new color ramp as a gradient. And it zoomed us up here. We'll click on that. We'll click on that. And it will bring up this. Now we're getting multiple levels down into resources here because resources can be within resources within resources. And you can see in the editor how we're getting these different colored windows to try and help us keep track of how deep we are in that resource within resource hierarchy. So we wanna be working within this purple one here. This color right here, uh, if we click on this and drag it all the way over, we want it to be set to white, not black. And this final color right here, if you click on it, we want it to be set to white, but with zero alpha. Now you can see we have this gradient from white to transparent, and our particle over here is fading out. And that's the last thing we need to do. This particle is ready to be used. Let's come into our enemy cannon. In the same way that we uh, got access to our spark particle effect, we're gonna get access to this impact particle effect. So we'll call it impact particle effect equals preload impact particle burst effect. Now we also want to create this impact particle just like we did our other one. And if you want to try and challenge yourself to create it yourself on the enemy, you can pause the video and do that right now and use the previous one as a template. But there is a twist, which is that we actually want to rotate this particle based on the, the direction between the hurt boxes. So there's a twist if you wanna try and figure that out yourself. If not, just unpause and, well, if you were paused, you wouldn't hear me say that, but let's imagine you did and we'll just start from here. Var impact particle equals impact particle burst effect dot instantiate get tree dot current scene dot add child impact particle impact particle dot global position equals sprite two d dot global position and we're actually going to move it a little bit as well. So we'll get our sprites position, but then we'll call move toward, which just takes that position and moves it by a little bit. Other hitbox. Let's maximize the code here so we've got room. Dot global position, minus eight. Oh, uh, dot global position, comma, minus eight so this is what we're moving toward the other hitbox and this is the amount so technically we're moving away from it because we're moving a negative amount but there's no move away so we just pass in a negative amount and move toward now let's rotate it impact particle dot rotation equals sprite 
2D dot global position dot direction to other hitbox dot global position. So we're getting the direction from our sprite to the other hitbox, and then we're grabbing its angle, and that will rotate it by that amount. Now let's see how it looks. Should be able to attack it. And there we've got our hit effect on these as well. And it should be rotated, so let's check that. Make sure that it's working. And yep, if we attack from there, we get that. Looking really good. That's looking much better than what we had before. So we've added all the little particle effects. In the next few videos, we'll be adding the player taking damage when they hit an enemy. So we can add a new state to the player and add a little bit of a red flash to them for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like the video, comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you all in the next one.